Yes, Monday lunchtime back in the UK and with us here in Germany. Darren Bent alongside me is about to pick a player that he thinks is going to make a big difference in uh, his game today. Darren, what's the game and who's the player? So it's France versus Belgium and I'm going to go for Antoine Griezmann. Um, good player. I mean, I think we're 100, over 100 caps for, for France. Uh, I think he broke Lillian Tram's record in his last appearance in terms of games at a major tournament. And I just think France looked really disjointed in their last game when he wasn't available. And I think you put him into that team behind Mbappe, I think, yeah, he can make a big, big difference. Anton Griezmann, I'm going to go for it. Antoine Griezmann, who was in the lift earlier on, uh, spotted by a couple of talk sport colleagues of mine. Um, he's in our hotel and he plays tonight for the French against Belgium, one would think. Uh, Darren, thank you for that. That was all thanks to Intuit QuickBooks. Search QuickBooks and you will find out more. Euro Game Changer on Talk Sport with Intuit QuickBooks. Enjoy more of the football with business accounting software that could save you up to eight hours a week. Search QuickBooks to find out more. Alex is alongside Darren with me here in Dusseldorf, Simon, back home in London. Um, during the Euros, here's the thing. You may have seen uh, AI-generated clips online showing England boss Gareth Southgate seemingly speaking at a press conference. Some of the clips on Twitter, Instagram and TikTok have been viewed millions of times and then recirculated. Some of the clips show Southgate being dismissive or rude about his players' This was one such clip. First of all, I'd like to apologize to the nation. Um, I'm clearly out of my depth and have no idea what I'm doing. I always park the bus when we take the lead, but then again, when your players press like uh, headless chickens and pass the ball like a bunch of <laughs> there's not much you can do. Well, maybe unsurprisingly, the FA have come in with a statement and they've said, as we do with all harmful content, we will take steps to have these offensive videos removed. Gareth and everyone in the camp are focused on the next game. Um, Simon, <laughs> I, I would have thought it would be pretty darn easy to distinguish between fake and fiction here, would you, would you not? Well, because of the content. And you know, the, the old expression of art imitating real life, isn't there? In this instance, art is probably more reflective of the real representation of what we're watching. Um, but... Look, I mean, the, the artificial intelligence side of things in society, I'm ironically writing a book using artificial intelligence to understand certain aspects of the way forward in society. Um, we have this challenge with artificial intelligence and the way that it's going, and the idea of being able to find out authenticity and be able to legitimise what is real content and what is not is going to be a battle that needs to be had, and whether that's watermarks on screens to be able to determine what's authentic and what's not. I mean, I think people can pretty much see that, that the likely content coming out of Gareth Southgate's mouth against the, the artificial intelligence version of it isn't going to be the same. And it's a bit of a storm in a teacup. I mean, we're always seeing parodies. We're always seeing situations. And now technology is absolutely providing for it. I've been doing chat GBT, as I say, to write this book and having bots created of me, having conversations with a, a long since departed Max Wall and, and Marty Feldman about dreadful subjects. And you can't tell the difference. You cannot tell the difference. I'm listening to myself talk nonsense um, to, uh, to Marty Feldman and Max Wall about some ridiculous subject matter that I won't go into on air because it's probably a little bit too risque. But the point is, is that we yeah. are now in this technological situation where these things exist. I think most people with common sense will know that these aren't authentic, albeit the actual, uh, the actual observations that he's making are probably quite right. <laughs> I mean, I, I find, I don't know about you, Alex, I find them a, a, like a colossal waste of time. Mm. Um, you, you look at some of them, some of them are quite believable. Some people will buy into them. Yeah. I mean, he rabbits on about we miss Jordan Henderson in, in one other uh, such AI clip. And some people will buy on it and, and, and go with it, thinking that it's factual. Well, I don't think it was AI when he said we haven't found a solution to replace Calvin Phillips, was it? Although, <laughs> although it could have been. Um, I, I get your point, Jim. I think most people with common sense will, 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 will just have a laugh and move on. But unfortunately, there are an awful lot of people who inhabit social media who lack common sense and might actually take it seriously. I mean, do you think down the, uh, the FA needed to come out with a statement? Just obviously was ticking a box, aren't they? Because you're right. I mean, the version that you played there was probably one of the cleaner versions of the ones I've yeah, exactly. <laughs> from that Gareth Southgate audio. But yeah, I just think the FA just doing what they need to do, the due diligence to kind of say, listen, come on, we know it's not serious, but AI is going to be a big part of football moving forward. I'm, I'm convinced about that. It's, I mean, it's a sign of the time, Simon, when you, yeah, I mean, you said earlier on, I'm using AI to write a book. I mean, why? 
Because because AI can trawl across so many things and bring so many things into into play from from the actual outcomes of things to the way the manner in which you provide content and and can be able to disseminate it. I'm interestingly whenever I do an article and I'm not using newspaper columns as AI based, but I've written articles and then gone into AI, put the same subject matter to see how close the AI generates information because this is the technology of the future. These are the things that are going to innovate in our society and the next skill set, next generation of of training will have to be around artificial intelligence because that's the way that technology is going and what it's being utilized for but it's fascinating and it's eerie and that's why you've seen these battles in Hollywood with actors looking at the the AI versions of themselves being utilized so that studios don't have to pay for their talent because you can just replicate the sound the look the feel of an individual and it's and it's eerie and technology at times can be disconcerting uh, and so when you look at how AI, AI can be used for forces of good it will always have situations where there are challenges with it and until they get some control over it. We've got an internet that we developed and social media has been developed and there's a balance between has it been a good for our society or has it been bad? The provision of information and the utilisation of information is what changes the way people see things and what changes and changes the way that we approach things. So when we look at social media, Jim, we look at it as a toxic cesspit of people being able to say the most dreadful things but there are times when it's provided a connectivity to the world which has been quite unique. It's not about the innovation, it's about the governance around it and the reaction to it. Social media doesn't get governed because people don't want to be publishers they don't want to be responsible for content so ultimately you see the toxicity of social media ai now is in its first second or third generation one of my closest friends who i know that you know was one of the founders of a business called autonomy which was one of the first ai companies in this country that was sold to hewlett packard for 11 billion quid and the future of these industries and ai as a as an evolution is fascinating and you see this sort of stuff in social media and digital workspaces and what you'll need to have is a degree Degree of control over what is legitimate and what's not. Now, whether that's watermarking authenticity to make sure that people can understand what it is and what it isn't. But right now, yeah. I don't think it's that troublesome for Gareth Southgate to be parodied. We've seen parody videos say. forever. Yeah, but Simon, this Monday lunchtime, please uh, put me in the picture here. I mean, don't destroy the image for me. That wonderful column you write in the mail. That's you, isn't it? It's not AI. No, I said to you, what I did was I write a column <laughs> and then I see how clever <laughs> AI is and it's a bit disconcerting because it gets, because what it does, Jim, it trawls over everything I've ever done, everything I've ever written, everything I've ever said, every podcast I've done, every radio show I've ever done, every book I've written, every dreadful utterance and mutterings that I may have had and it can produce an outcome that's bloody, si bloody similar to my own thinking, which is a bit disconcerting because we don't need a digital doppelganger of me, do we? That's absolutely Which terrifying, isn't it, by it, the way? It That's more is. frightening than the prospect of England losing to Sablakia last night. Absolutely. Simon, be afraid. Be very afraid. We are 12.30 at home, one thirty here. On AM, on DAB, via the TalkSport app and on your smart speaker. TalkSport.